a country that makes alcoholic drinks from fermented mare's milk. It is a land of indigenous peoples with different cuisines in summer and winter. A land where horses are given as dowry for marriage. A country with more horses than the population of a country. The land of those who demolish their houses when the weather changes and build elsewhere. When you heard all this, didn't you feel a little curious? But the more you know about that country, the more curious you become. Hello, and welcome to the new episode of Billion Stories. Our today's journey is to a curious world. Yes. To Mongolia, which borders Western Asia. This video shares with you detailed information about Mongolia, the remnant of the Mongol Empire that ruled China, Eastern Europe, and many Indian lands due to bloodlust. Let's get started. As usual, let's start with history. Mongolia is a small Asian country formed in November 1924. Mongolia is said to have originated from the word Mongol which means brave. The country is the 18th largest country, with a population of 3.3 million according to the United Nations in 2021. The capital of Mongolia is the small town of Ulaanbaatar, which makes up three quarters of the population. At the entrance to the large complex known as the Government Palace, completed in 1954, you can see a large statue of the ruler Genghis Khan. The word Genghis Khan literally means Emperor of Emperors, founder of the Mongol Empire and ruler from 1206 to 1227. He was the ruler of Asia with 500 wives, who rose from Timujin to become the first Khan of the Mongol Empire. Genghis Khan created the most obedient and orderly army of the time by uniting the warring Mongol tribes. He invaded and subjugated all the lands adjacent to his empire, destroyed their cultures, and made them part of his empire. An empire built with the blood of thousands of people. The 40-meter statue of Genghis Khan is located outside Ulaanbaatar. The main attraction of the place is the statue itself. Probably because of the large amount of copper and gold mines in Mongolia, the statue was made of stainless steel. Genghis Khan died in August 1227. The miraculous fact is that the emperor died after falling from a horse. Now let's fly to the Mongolian sites. Although most of Mongolia is arid, the lush greenery of the pine trees makes Mongolia beautiful. Most of the territory of Mongolia is rocky and rugged. However, its beauty deserves special mention. It is a common sight to see a large number of deer grazing in these places. The Mongols use this animal for pulling carts, racing, and making wool. However, they get more income from yak milk. Horses galloping through the dry grasslands is an important pastime of the Mongols. They have been raising horses of the same breed since the reign of Genghis Khan. These horses can survive temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius and minus 40 degrees Celsius. In this country where horses are raised for meat, milk, and kumis, there has long been a saying in Mongolia that a horseless man is like a bird without wings. The ancestors of Mongolia are nomadic tribes. Thus, it must be because of being nomadic, these people are less interested in agriculture and have more wasteland in Mongolia. Even so, some grow corn, wheat, barley, and potatoes. The Mongols mostly eat food that resembles soup. Their diet also changes as the weather changes. They eat dairy-based foods in the summer, and brown food in the winter, which includes meat, wild garlic, onions, and potatoes. Let me say one more thing with great enthusiasm. Horse's milk is a special type of fermented beverage in Mongolia. This is called kumis. They serve it to foreigners visiting Mongolia. In many parts of Mongolia there are still dirt roads. As you walk along those paths, you can see rock formations on both sides that look like sculptures created by nature itself. The most famous of these is the Turtle Rock in the Gorky Terilj National Park area. It looks like a tortoise rising from the water to the shore. It is said to be a thousand years old. No one makes any claims because they are made naturally. This park is the largest national park in Mongolia. 80% of the Mongolian population is Buddhist. During the 1930s, more than 150 Buddhist monks were killed by the severity of communism. At that time, Mongolia had little contact with the outside world. The steps of Buddhist temples are made of wooden planks. In front of each temple, there are chakras with mantras the size of a barrel. Once they are rotated, it is equivalent to chanting a mantra once. In addition, turning the heavy wheels will improve your physical health. It is also customary to surround the pine tree and pray with the forehead on it. Now you can see the round tent of the tribal people. 
Inside the wooden fence, these are white circular tents, also known as yurt. Inside the unmarked tent, there are beds and seats all around. Cooking and eating are all in the middle. Multiple barrel kumis are always stocked inside these single-door tents. When the weather changes, nomads travel from there. Therefore, these tents are easy to dismantle and can be easily relocated. That is the great feature of the tents. Outside the tent, you can see another fence made of wooden poles. That is their stable. Dogs can also be seen on guard. Guard dogs are responsible for horses grazing in the meadows during the day. If you go closer and think about how these dogs control about 50 horses, those dogs will show you the meaning of the word guard. Despite leading a simple life, Mongolians still have the custom of giving cattle, gold, and household items as dowry for weddings. Mongolians usually speak two languages. They are Oirat and Bariat. But there are also Chinese speakers. If you don't know any of these, you don't have to bother talking a lot. You don't have to know the language to understand things, do you? Mongolia is home to the fifth largest desert in the world. In this desert known as Gopi, 5% is sand and the rest is rock. From here, the world's largest dinosaur fossils and dinosaur eggs have been found. Mongolia is home to snow leopards. But it is true that a snow leopard cannot roar or moan. Mongolia is a country with the beautiful nickname Land of the Blue Sky. It gets its name from the fact that blue skies are seen more than 250 days a year. Natam Festival is celebrated as the National Festival of Mongolia. This celebration is a remembrance of the liberation of the country. Celebrated every year in July, the festival is enlivened by sporting events, a military parade, and dance and musical performances that evoke Mongolian culture. The three-match series takes place in the Mongolian capital, Ulaanbaatar. They are horse racing, archery, and wrestling. It is a celebration that still discriminates against women. This is because only men are still allowed to participate in these competitions. The Golden Eagle Festival is a two-day festival held every year. This is the oldest Mongolian festival. Starting with a parade, the festival showcases all kinds of hunting costumes and equipment. Assessing the speed and ability of the falcon in the hands of hunters. Men show courage, horseback riding, and practice a variety of traditional martial arts. The Camel Festival is another festival held in Mongolia. Camels are as much a favorite of the Mongols as horses. The camel with two humps is a specialty of Mongolia. The annual Camel Festival has been held for 12 years by a local organization that works to conserve the declining number of these camels. During the festival, people will have the opportunity to interact with the camels and get a first-hand understanding of the nomadic lifestyle of the camel keepers. Singing while riding a horse is very popular in Mongolia. Horse riders use the technique of singing by the throat. Throat music is one of the most important aspects of Mongolian culture. This music is known as kumi. The music was inscribed on the UNESCO list in 2009 and no tourist returns from Mongolia without enjoying it. Sagaon Savarga is one of the most unique landscapes in the world. Made of red and grey stones, this natural wonder attracts a large number of foreign tourists. For thousands of years it has been shaped by wind and rain, and has a shape that fits the concept of what the surface of Mars would look like. Each of your likes is very important for this channel to survive. With that, press that like button below. The Mongolian currency has no coins. This is a very special fact about Mongolia. Everything is made of paper notes, and the currency is officially called the Mongolian Tugruk or Togrog. Genghis Khan appears in high denomination notes such as 20,000, 10,000, 5,000, 1,500 notes. General Sukhbader, who declared Mongolia an independent state from China in 1921, appears among other lower denominations. Mongolia is the world's largest consumer of sheep. Vegetarians should not look here. This is because Mongolian cuisine consists mainly of dairy products, meat, and animal fats. Mongolia has the highest per capita consumption of sheep and goat meat in the world. Ulaanbaatar is one of the most polluted capitals in the world. Pollution and smog have increased massively across the capital over the past decade as a result of the influx of nomadic families into Ulaanbaatar. To give you an idea, the population of Mongolia is only 3.3 million. About half of them live in Ulaanbaatar. Ulaanbaatar was named the world's most polluted capital city by Time magazine. There are 44 landlocked countries in the world. This means, all their borders are surrounded by other countries, without any coastline. 
Of these, Mongolia is the second largest landlocked country. The first of these is Kazakhstan. Mongolian is the official language of Mongolia. It is the most well-known and most widely spoken language in the Mongolian language family. There is a theory that Mongolian horsemen may have invented ice cream. They took cream in containers made from animal intestines as provisions on long journeys across the Gobi Desert in winter. As they galloped, the cream was vigorously shaken, while the sub-zero temperature caused it to freeze. Ice cream spread across China. According to the theory, the traveler Marco Polo brought the idea from China to Italy in 1295. In 1922, Roy Chapman Andrews, an American, became the first man to discover dinosaur bones from the Cretaceous in the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. Chapman is said to be the inspiration for the popular film character Indiana Jones. Genghis Khan's descendants are considered to have an astonishing population in Central Asia. Geneticists are beginning to find a variant of the Y chromosome that is transmitted only through the male line in the DNA of many Central Asian men. According to this, 17 million people are reported to share a common ancestor of the 13th century. The larch is the tallest tree in Mongolia. Of these, the largest ever recorded larch is 148 feet tall. The main religion in Mongolia is Lamaism. That is the yellow sect of Tibetan Buddhism. It originated in Tibet in the 7th century. Lamaism was introduced to the Mongol people in the 16th century by the Mongol ruler Altan Khan. He also first assigned the title of Dalai Lama to Tibet's religious leader. Although Genghis Khan was illiterate, he introduced writing to Mongolia in the early 13th century, borrowing the Uyghur script. Some of the letters in this script, written in vertical columns from left to right, are indistinguishable from each other. Mongolian postage stamps first appeared in August 1924. The Mongolian traditional dress is called the deal. It is similar to an old European-style folded tunic. Mongolia is the second largest producer of Kashmiri goat wool in the world. Mongolia ranks behind China with a market share of about 20%. Mongolian native horses are called Taki, the Mongolian word for soul. These are the last remaining wild horses on the planet. The current Mongolian national flag, adopted in 1992, is of three equal vertical bands of red, blue, and red. The Persian city of Merv, an ancient study center known as the Pearl of Asia, where Genghis Khan carried out the largest massacre in history. Second after the massacre of Armenians by the Turks in 1915. In addition to the 400 artisans, Genghis Khan ordered the massacre of the entire population. Historians estimate that millions of Persians were killed in that massacre. Horses were also used to deliver messages throughout Mongolia over 1,000 years ago. This postal service, which had different stations, was known as Yam. In the Yam messaging system, horses from one station deliver messages to the next station and rest. Horses from the second station will deliver messages to the third station and rest there. So, without the horsemen, horses were constantly moving messages without getting tired. This system facilitates the faster delivery of messages. Created by Genghis Khan, this system became one of the first international postal systems. Mongolia, one of the safest countries in the world for tourists, passed an anti-corruption law in 2006. At an average altitude of 1,580 meters above sea level, Mongolia is one of the highest countries in the world. In Mongolian culture, pointing fingers and speaking loudly is considered harsh. Mongolians love children. So it is possible to see four children in their average family. A mother of five is awarded in the country as honored mother. The Mongols worship the blue sky. They considered the sky to be the father and the earth to be the mother. As civilization relied on the forces of nature, they worshipped various elements of nature. Mongolian wrestling is known as Bok. Wrestling has been popular since the days when it was used in sports to keep Genghis Khan's army in good shape and strength. Mongolia was under Soviet control from 1921 to 1980. During that time many developments took place in Mongolia with the help of Stalin. Most of the buildings we see today were built then. Copper is the largest export from Mongolia. Coal and gold are next. Although many of these mines are operated by Mongolians, many more are working abroad. Much of it is in neighboring China. In addition, Mongolia is a major exporter of meat, dairy products, textiles, and furniture. They also make and sell wool from yak fur. Mongolia was under a large monastery. After the Mongol Revolution of 1921, the monastery disappeared. 
The activities of the monasteries and temples became active after the later communist rule. Despite monarchy, communism, and democracy, Mongolia's greatest heritage is its people. To make this video, it takes time and money to get the best video footage. For this channel to survive, your every like is very important. So, give us your support by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. This chapter of Billion Stories about Mongolia ends here. Which country would you like to learn more about in the next video? Tell us in the comments. When you hear Mongolia, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Let us know below. Until there is a new video, take care and goodbye.